Hey boys and girls, welcome to Fisherman's Wharf, Cedar Creek Lake, Bass Champs. Mr. Hawkins and I, and yes, I'm leaning on my new boat. Check it out. It's beautiful. Team Checkmate. I'm going to say it hadn't been on the water in a while since it expired, the uh, registration expired in September of 1997. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, this was a tournament that Terry didn't get to practice. He was at Rayburn fishing the Toyota series, and I got to come down and spend uh, a day, actually a part of a day. So we, we both have a lot of history here, and you guys saw practice last week. I really thought we'd get a lot more bites today than what we got. So we started out, and I'm not even going to show you footage, we started out on just on some retainer walls. Actually, as we were getting ready to take off, there was some shad going up and down the retainer wall right there at Log Cabin, which is probably where we should have started. And we thought, all right, well, let's run some retainer walls and try to get on shad spawn. And we ran them and never had a bite. Matter of fact, I don't believe we ever caught a fish. Did we catch fish on a moving bait today? Never caught a fish on a moving bait. That's right. You caught, you caught, he caught one on a big crankbait. I'll show you here in a second. So, uh, so our backup plan was what you guys saw me do down here last week, which was fish out both out pretty deep, 20, 25 feet deep, and then also some secondary points, uh, just trying to catch those post spawners coming back out. And and what's really weird, actually, let's 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 watch the fish we caught right here first, and I'll come back and talk about it. By the way, while the camera was off, Mr. Hawkins went ahead and caught number three off the same spot. We caught him day on that rim spawn on that point real good too. That main lake going out there is really good. That'll help. Ah, he ain't as big as I thought he was. Yeah, he'll keep. Oh, let's take a peek. Oh, that fish felt, fish felt better when I set the hook than what he turned out to be.
he was in them roots. I was banging my way through them. Turn the boat around. I can feel it coming through them. It's don't. There you go, number four. Not fight at all, did he? No, he did. He felt like a dead wet rag. <laughs> I think that. Terry saw that fish. He saw that fish on the Garmin, bust a school of shad, and threw over there on top of it. Caught him. That's five. It took us a while, but that's five. So, uh, just a little bit on what's going on here. So the lake is a little bit high. You know, they don't really let Cedar Creek get high, but it's been a bunch of rain. The water cleared up from last week from what I saw, but the water temp's still cool. It's still in the, in the high 60s. I don't think we ever saw 70 degree water. Now we were on the main lake. We never got off the main lake today. But uh, we, uh, we got out and as you guys saw right there, we, we caught a couple of fish on uh, one of my little secondary spots and then we went out deep uh, on the main lake and we were able to cull up and and uh, we caught 1482 and I'll tell you I would not have weighed the fish I asked Terry do you want to weigh the fish and he said yeah let's weigh him because I really you know normally when the fish surprise you you think you got 26 and you weigh 22 I really thought we had 11 pounds today and I guess it's just we had four just real solid two and a half pound fish. Actually, they had to be bigger than that. They had to be two and three quarters because we had one that was a squeaker. So we weighed almost 15 pounds. I'll be surprised if we don't get paid. I mean, I think we'll get paid, but you never know here because there was not a lot of tringers getting weighed. Yeah. We saw a lot of people with spinning tackle too. So, you know, spinning reels and stuff. And they so weren't we, crappie fishing. Yeah, so we knew it was probably tougher than what we thought. So. Yeah. Well, and we talked to, who did you talk to up there that didn't catch them today? Uh, well, Russell Lee had a rough day, and I know if, if, if Russell, Russell doesn't Russell catch him, Russell has a bad day here, then it's it's tough. It's tough, yeah. He's, he's a great fisherman here. Yeah, and that's kind of the deal. You can usually now. Now, don't get me wrong. Somebody landed on a shad spawn, and I didn't see what was leading, but I'm sure it's in the mid 20s, or somebody got on some deep fish. Uh, and, and I I didn't finish my thought a minute ago. The one thing that struck me weird today was. I only saw one of all those fish we caught that truly looked like a post spawn fish. Yeah. Matter of fact, the fish you caught out deep, the little chunk, it was just fat and didn't look beat up at all. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on down here, but 
surely these fish have spawned out by now, but we did not catch fish where there should have been post-spawn fish or that looked like post-spawn fish. Yeah, we basically saw, when we got out in the deep stuff, we just saw balls of, of shad and they, they were deeper than what we were fishing. So we kept kind of easing out deeper and deeper. And, and I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that. So I don't know if, if you, I, I haven't seen the footage yet, but Terry caught that crankbait fish. He saw that fish on the Garmin live scope bust a ball of bait and he threw over there and caught that fish i'm sure that was the same fish you saw yeah, bust that ball sure of bait was. so again uh, if you're not using forward imaging you're you're getting beat by people and not us right today but you're getting beat by people that are because it is a just a crazy amazing tool to use on that offshore stuff but if i was fishing down here next week i would stay offshore yeah based on what i saw today so and again one of our spots we caught what, we catch six or seven keepers today. Uh, ah, shoot, I forgot. <laughs> I know we culled once, and I think we had one other that was probably a keeper. Yeah. But we caught three or four of those off that little old shallow secondary point, and then we just kind of bounced around. I don't think we caught two off any other spot, or I think it was just one, one, one on yeah. our other spot. So, but anyway, we had a good day. Uh, I enjoyed it. Our next tournament's at Tawakini, and we both got some good history at Tawakini as well. So. Uh, we look forward to that. I'm going to fish, I think, next weekend Bass Champs is at LBJ. I believe that's right. I don't think I'll get to fish that, but then the next one's at Toledo Bend, and there's $6,000 of spark money up wow. for, for grabs there. So uh, there's every chance in the world I'll be at, at uh, Toledo Bend. That's just too much money not to go down there and try to catch them. So. If hey guys, as good as time as any to jump over and do the spark drawing for this week. Sorry it's a little late in the week. Had a crazy week. You guys will know why very soon. Uh, so, nobody won spark money at Cedar Creek. So that means there's four grand rolled to the next tournament in the North Division. The next tournament, May 15th in the Central Division. I can't remember how much money's up for grabs there. I think it's four grand, but I'll update that next week. And then of course, the East Division uh, for the Toledo Band event, there'll be eight, thousand dollars of spark money up for grabs at that tournament i'm gonna do my very best to be there because i mean first place is 20 and spark money's eight so i mean that's crazy remember you don't have to be a spark customer for 75 bucks you can join you and your team to spark fishing you do it at the same place just go to www.sparkfishing.com also, there's only been two big bass weighed and all this big bass money still out there. We got nine lakes that's gonna have $2,000 of winning. There's only one lake that's even in those nine. And that's my fish at Rayburn. The other fish I believe was caught out of Nacogdoches. I believe it was a eight or nine pounder and it paid 250 bucks. So tons of money still out there. Uh, all you gotta do is sign up for Spark Fishing. And if you can be a Spark Energy customer, you can do that too, but it's a great deal. So. Let's uh, let's see who's going to win this week's spark money. We're going to draw it out of this right here. My hand's empty. We'll go all the way to right there. I had one in my hand and it got away from me. Justin Parrish, J-U-S-T-Y-N, out of Lago Vista, <coughs> excuse me, out of Lago Vista, Texas. Congratulations, Justin. You're the winner this week. I'll reach out and make sure you know that. You will be getting an envelope somewhere in the next few weeks. It just says rewards on it. And it feels like a credit card. It is a credit card. It's a $250 gift card from Spark Energy. So thanks to Spark for continuing to support us. And uh, let's finish up our report from Cedar Creek right here. If I can have my new boat ready, uh, <laughs> as you can see, I got to do a little bit of work on it. I got to get a troll motor on it and got to get new tires and wheels and anything. But... If I can get it ready, uh, I'll be at Toledo Band. So, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, got the prop videos again. I'll be interviewing Nick Peterson, who is the performance propeller manager for Mercury Racing, sometime next week. So, if you guys got questions for him, please submit them to me, Ken Smith Fishing and Outlook.com, or through my Instagram, Ken Smith Fishing 2.0. That's a 2.0 or just comment on YouTube and uh, I'll see it and we'll ask Nick those questions. So enjoyed it as always. Yeah. yeah. We're going to go to Tawakin and catch them. I hope so. We're going to try. We'll see you guys soon.